Welcome, we're here at All EV Canada in Burnside, Nova Scotia. Today we're working on a 2017 Nissan LEAF and a 2019 Tesla Model 3. What we're going to do today is do a comparison between the steering racks of the Nissan LEAF, more traditional Nissan LEAF steering rack, and the pretty advanced uh, Tesla Model 3 steering rack. We're going to take the Tesla Model 3 steering rack apart and we're going to show you why it can drive on its own. Let's get to it. So we're looking at the Nissan LEAF steering rack here. It is a traditional uh, rack and pinion. If you take a look here, we can just actuate the, where the steering rack would go in and that turns the pinion which translates the rack back and forth. So pretty standard. There would be power steering on the column uh, with a planetary gear set but there's nothing on the rack itself. No sensors or anything. So a pretty standard rack and pinion. Before we take apart the power steering rack, we're going to show you one in a Model 3. So here we have our interactive demo electric vehicle that's currently in development. And we can see right there, there's a U-joint, that's your steering column. And it goes in, you can see the sensor in the back. We've got our inner tie rod going out to the wheel. We've got our power steering assist, electric power steering assist. And then our uh, right inner tie rod. So there we go, that's what it looks like in the subframe. So here we are in a Tesla Model 3. We are coming up on a hard left corner. We're going to show you how the autopilot handles it. So pretty hard corner. It did slow down a bit there. But it does show that the power steering in this car is uh, pretty impressive compared to other vehicles. They would usually not be able to handle this much of a corner. All right, we're in the shop. Let's take this thing apart. So this particular one is from a Model 3. It went through an accident and actually snapped in half pretty much. So don't feel too bad about us taking it apart. We're gonna start off removing the inner tie rods. So there are these clips, which I've already removed, so it's, they're very easy to do. There's one, there's two. And then in behind the inner tie rod, or the, the boot is the inner tie rod, basically a bolt and uh, I've cracked them already, so they're easy to pull off. Now we're gonna take a look at the input shaft of the, your, your steering wheel. So we're gonna remove the boot, and then there are three bolts holding this cover on, so there's a bearing in this cover as well. So let's remove those. Nice, now to remove this cover, we need a flathead screwdriver. You just kind of have to poke and pry. There you go. Now underneath, we see a torque sensor. So there's a triggering wheel and the sensor itself. So we're gonna remove the sensor now, so we don't damage it. So this can pop out and it'll bring the harness with it. There's a couple little clips we gotta remove. And then we can pull that out. Now we're going to flip it over. And there's this access bolt. The bottom, I believe it's 24 mil. Impact it out. Nice. And then, underneath that cover is a, I believe it's 17. And that holds the shaft in. So we're going to pull that and we're going to hold the shaft from the top. Great. Now we're, in order to get that shaft out, it needs a bit of persuasion. So we're going to tap it out with my persuader. There we go. Let's get a good shot of that getting removed. Nice. So there you see the pinion, and then we have the rack down below. So you remove that. Now we're going to move to the self-driving unit. 
We're gonna remove this case on the right to give you a good view of the belt that's inside and the motor input shaft. So there are five 13 millimeter bolts. Nice. So this cover will come right off and then you can see uh, the belt that actually drives the, the autonomous vehicle. So one cool thing about this too is the way the motor is mounted, it's actually eccentrically mounted. So when you mount, when you, when you tighten it, tighten these three bolts that hold it on, you can rotate it and it actually tightens the belt. So we're going to loosen these bolts, not quite take them out. This will allow me to rotate it. And now you can see the belt's very loose now. And then as, when they manufacture it and they, they put this together, assemble it rather, they tighten it up. So they rotate this to the point where the belt is tight enough. So that's very interesting. So there's a, a gear reduction going on here where the motor is multiplying the, well this reduction is multiplying the motor output torque to this ball screw which is what uh, steers the car. So this goes back and forth, steering left and right and there's a, there's a set of balls in a uh, spiral groove that uh, allow for efficient and, and quick uh, travel of this rack. So we're going to remove the motor now and then we'll show you what's a little further down. Three bolts. So it loosened it there. It'll fall right out. Now this thin belt <laughs> is what's keeping the car on the road when it's in full autonomous driving. It's pretty amazing actually. You can take what you want from that. Uh, there's four eight millimeter bolts there. Actually, yeah, eight mil. I think seven will fit. So now this plate will come off with the uh, the larger belt, and then what we have here is is the actual lead screw uh, that actuates the, the the shaft. So there you go. I don't really want to go any further into this because if I do, the balls will fall out and they'll make a mess. But I'll show you what it looks like at the top. You can kind of see that there's a spiral groove that matches the, the one uh, machined into the rack. And then if you look closely, you can see many little balls, ball bearings, that, are, that fit in the groove. So that allows for very efficient, fast, oh, we're too far. There we go. <laughs> and it, and it's, it's cut all the way down. About half of the rack is machined with that groove. That concludes the, the rack teardown. Now we're going to take a look a little bit at the motor and show you an interesting feature that it has. So the motor uh, is, is this section here and it has a control board up top. In order to remove that, there's a, a single bolt. We've got a T25. And then once you remove that bolt, which is underneath a, a layer of, I believe it's a urethane or some sort of seal, there's actually a seal that goes all the way around here. Now we've already, rem we've already removed the seal, but it's quite difficult. We actually had to kind of pry in and then go around with a screwdriver, flathead, that uh, would allow us to pop it open. Now, the wiring is held onto the circuit board, which is held into the, the, it's screwed in underneath this cover. So you actually have to, when you remove this large black cover, you actually have to keep the, the uh, pins in these connectors down. So I've pushed those down a little bit while I pr pulled this up. And there we go. We have our circuit board. What's quite interesting about this is there's two sets of control and uh, power supply. So at first we thought, oh, maybe it's for, uh, forward and reverse, but it's actually for a redundant supply for the power steering motor. So we've got a backup 
for the power and the control. Quite interesting to see it parallel. It's actually not fully symmetrical, um, but interesting to say the least. We can pull this board off. We actually had to desolder the three legs of this uh, sensorless, uh, brushless DC motor. So we desoldered them, and then we remove these four screws. There we go. Now this whole board can come off. And exposed below is another metal plate. We've got the three legs going past this plate. Now in order to remove the plate and the motor, it actually requires us to remove this uh, shouldered uh, uh, belt drive. Uh, and in order to do that, we have to heat it up. I believe it's been, it's been heated up to expand it, and then it gets slid onto the shaft. And as it cools, it solidifies on. Um, we're not going to remove that today, but uh, you can imagine that there's a brushless DC motor underneath that. So there's the motor. And then the other underside of the board, got some thermal paste for a few key components. But other than that, pretty straightforward. So that concludes our teardown of the Tesla Model 3 steering rack and power steering, electric power steering unit. Uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you learned something. I learned lots. Uh, we'll be coming back with lots of new videos. We've got a Tesla Model 3 battery teardown coming, uh, as well as some projects with our interactive demo electric vehicle. I uh, hope you tune in. You can subscribe on YouTube, follow us on uh, Instagram, and check out our website, allevcanada.ca. Thanks for joining. See you soon.